power lifter. John, how long have you been training for? I started powerlifting in, in 2009, 2009, in the fall, um, with a guy named Monty Sparkman over at VMI, uh, my college I went to. Because I, I went there and I was like, I don't want to get small going through the rat line stuff. And so I was like, all right, well, I got to start lifting weights then. So they had a powerlifting program there and I just got into it. Well, John, what did you go to college for? Economics and business. Economics and business. Do you use your economics and business degree? I'm trying, man. Yeah? I'm trying. It's rough out there right now, but I'm trying. Lance is up on the blue. Lance with 501 on the bar. And on the red, Greg Baxter. Greg going 125, 275 kilos. John, I noticed a lot of people in the chat were, were rooting for you with the squats. Are you happy with the squats? Is that the plan? Oh, yeah. If that That's Awesome if they were. I really appreciate that. Um, and say hi to the people that are in the chat now that have been watching you. And yeah, uh, you have friends really and family watching? Uh, yeah, I've got some friends. A um, uh, little quick shout out to Duranda and, um, you know, the weight room over in Richmond. I'm, I'm from Virginia, so it's a, it's a small group over there. It's not, not a huge powerlifting, you know, um, seen as you would but yeah you know the squats felt felt good uh, i missed i missed depth on my opener i think i was just a little excited i tried to rush it um i really wanted 760 i think that was in the tank today to be honest but um you know the bench that i'm gonna do and the deadlift i'm gonna do are still still setting up for my girl which is to go a little over 2100 which um, would be the all-time world record in yes, 242 uh -huh. yeah in in uh knee sleeve so i'm usually squatting in wraps because I'm just, I'm a scaredy cat, and I just, <laughs> I'm scared of using knee sleeves. But uh, I think I've got my form figured out a little bit better. Uh, still trying to get some tweaks out of it, but. Um. Andy is up on the blue. Andy trying to go six for six. It's 5'12". That's a big PR for, ah. Oh. That's a miss. Tim Sparks on the red. Tim going 303. Okay, so those people who are tuning in that are listening that don't know, can you please tell them? Because you squat in wraps, and today you squatted uh -huh. raw, that there is a difference. There, there, honestly, there is a difference. Um, you know, I've lifted, I lifted single ply for four years. I've lifted, competed in just knee wraps, and I've done raw. And, you know, I do my own knee wraps. I always wrap myself. But if I can get someone to start really wrapping me and cranking them down, I mean, I could... I could probably get over 100 pounds out of them, to be honest. I mean, yeah, it's not uncommon to say a loose wrap could give you 50, and a really good wrap can maybe give you like yeah. 100, 125. Yeah, I, it shouldn't be too much of an ego involved. Like, look, if you're getting, if the knee wraps are helping you squat big weight, then just be proud of it. You know, be proud that you're squatting big weight. Don't be ashamed of, oh, well, we get 10 pounds out of knee wraps. I mean, just, it is what it is, so... I, I didn't get an opportunity to interview you in L.A. when I saw you. Uh, I knew who you were. I really wanted to interview you because I think you're a really technical lifter. Uh -huh. But where does that come from? Who instilled that in you? Oh, God, it probably has something to do with my OCD, to be honest. I have a little, little weird OCD things. But um, <laughs> I, when I get involved in something, I always go on, like 110%. So when I first started weightlifting, I had, you know, I have long legs, long arms, um, short torso. So my leverages are a little weird, not the best for powerlifting. Uh -huh. And so I was like, all right, let me do whatever I can do with my leverages and my form so that I don't have to have that worry, like worry about that. You know, I don't want to, I don't want to look sloppy. You know, I want to look like Eddie Cohen. You know, I want to look like, um, Gene Bell, you know, when you watch the Hawaiian record breakers and, uh, Passanella and Doug Furness, like I want to look like those guys, you know? So it's just like, I, I love the sport. I love the history. And, um, you know, just speaking sort of, of history, did you see you went in the Hall of Fame yesterday here? I did. What's your experience with Steve? Uh, meaning, how has Steve helped you since you've known him? Did Steve take you from one? Steve, I moved down to Atlanta for about a year, and I was going through some issues with my hips. My hips were becoming a little sore. My IT bands get pretty tight. And so they were, they were giving me issues. And Steve took me in. I, I remember I went up and talked to him. I was like, oh, my God, it's Steve Goggins. Like, I'm a fanboy. And I went up to him, and, and he was cool as can be. Uh, invited me over, and we trained for about a year. And he, he taught me a lot of things outside, weightlifting, powerlifting, in powerlifting, that it, it, I still carry on. And 
I mean, and it's just simple stuff. You know, it's not nothing crazy, but give us an example. Give me something that when you think of Steve, what comes to your mind that he's right, not? Right. Don't go, don't go crazy with programming. High volume programming is like the in thing right now. Right. And it won't be in in a couple of years. I mean, it, it just, it, it's just like Zumba and Taibo. They come in, they come out, right. you know. But high, high volume programming is like, it's what's in right now. Uh huh. But Steve is like, you got to listen to your body. If you respond well to squatting once a week, squat once a week. You know, I'd rather you squat 800 once a week than get beat up and squat 722. Oh, but I can say I'm squatting three times a week. That was one of the biggest things. Like, listen to your body. You know your body better than anyone else. Don't overcomplicate it. That's Tim Copeland going 347. Uh, that's a good fight, but it's not going to be a lift. Now, you want, you want the all-time world record total huh? at, at 242. Yep. So... If you miss an opening attempt, for people that don't know, if you miss an opening attempt, you can go up on your second. But if you uh -huh. miss a second, you can't go up on your third. So what's your strategy going after a world record attempt? Now, I don't want to, I'm not trying to jinx you, but let's say you miss your opening bench yeah. or you miss your opening. Do you still take your planned seconds? It, you have to. If I can quote, if I can quote the, uh, the great Mike Tyson. Everyone's got a plan until you get punched in the face, right? Okay, so you can have the best plan in the world, and hopefully your plan is you're not overreaching. You know, it's good to be positive, but you have to be real. And the day of the meet, that's why we have coaches. That's why we have handlers, because you're watching to see. I mean, I could smoke 500 in the gym, you know, and then I come in and, you know, I smoke 520 in here, you know, because I feel better, or maybe I felt a little bit worse. So... You really have to just watch it the day of the meet, and that's why, you know, having good coaches here and really helps out. Do let's let's say you get the all-time uh, total world record. Take me into your life and tell me what kind of sacrifices do you have to make to make that happen? I mean, you don't just train. You haven't just trained and said, you know, I want to take the all-time world record. You've had to make choices in your life, yeah. right? Uh -huh. Can you tell me and the people at home or wherever that are listening what kind of choices you've had to deal with? Oh, God. Man, where do I start? I mean, I've lost, I mean, to be honest, I've lost relationships. Um, I've lost quite a few relationships. Uh, I've actually changed jobs to help, you know, to sort of go along with my training. You know, I can't, I can't do something that's going to work me, you know, 14 hours a day, hard labor, and then expect to be the best. You know, sometimes you have to, well, maybe there's something else I can do to still make money, you know, because you still got to work. It's uh -huh. realistic. You got to be realistic. You still got to work. Uh -huh. But, there, I mean, I've definitely I've changed jobs. I've moved. I mean, I've, I've lost relationships. And it's hard to, <laughs> when you have a passion for a sport, that's not football. That's not basketball. That's not something mainstream. Like, we're not earning millions of dollars to do this. There's a passion in here. So it's hard for some people to understand, but you just have to roll with it. And, you, you know, you know at the end of the day that if that's what you love, that's what you love. So I've definitely had some, definitely had some people in my life, though, that have supported me a lot. So good friends and powerlifting community is always awesome. So I, you know, I... This is one of the best interviews I've ever done. I've done a lot of interviews. I talk to a lot of people. It's one of the best interviews I've ever done because you're a world-class powerlifter. I think you're a world-class person. You have. I appreciate that. Thank you. You have. Uh, you have a lot of people that look up to you, and I like that because you're you're an honest guy. You're not all about social media. You're not. You're not uh, putting yourself in a position to. Let other people think. Let other people think that, you know, this is a walk in a park. Like, oh, you know. No, it's it's not. And, and, but I mean, to still, I guess to expand upon that, you, you know, I wasn't always a popular kid growing up, and that, that taught me a lot. You know, to be humble, to be respectful. Right, My parents taught me that. But we're all humans here. You know, if someone wants to come train with me, come train with me. Like, I'm more than happy to train with someone or help someone. And, you know, when people come up to you at the gym, they're like, oh, dude, I can't lift with you guys. Come on, like, come train. You know, I'm no better than anyone else, than the person at the first 
lift of my flight, I'm no better. I'm no more important than that person. Uh-huh. So, yeah, I mean, it's one thing to be tough, like machismo and stuff. And like, yeah, that has its place. But, I mean, we're all people. We're all humans. We all bust our ass to get to this point. Right. So, if you don't respect that with someone else, maybe they're going through something. Maybe they didn't have the genetics as you. doesn't mean they're not putting in the work. So, you have to respect everyone and the work they put in. Um, but now if someone's just sort of joking around in the gym and just not taking it seriously, then you can be like, oh, I don't want to train with you. But, right. you know. You want to train around. You also want to train around people that support you and think like you. And I'm sure over the years, relationships have failed because people haven't understood what this was to you. But this is, this is a big part of your life, and that's why you're going after a world record. Because in order for you to break the world record, you don't only got to have a great day. You got to have everything else in your life supporting that. Yes. This is an incredible challenge you're on, and I like it. I've really enjoyed watching it today. I've watched every one of your squats, and I talked a little bit to Steve this morning about it. And you know, I've, I've, I just think records are meant to be broken, mm-hmm. and that's what they're made for. We we all come and go, but to leave a, to leave your mark on the sport, to leave a legacy behind. Mm-hmm. That's what you put back into it, and yep. it's how you give back. I say, I say, my advice to, to anyone out there, or to anyone you know, really getting started, like this is going to come overnight. It's not going to come overnight. And don't expect to get famous right away. You know, the way you build a legacy is to last. It's to last in the sport. If you come in real. Good fight by Chris Flores at 440. No lift. If you come in real fast and expect to get the popularity and the Instagram fame and everything like that, you're not going to be remembered. Like Eddie Cohen, um, Anthony Clark, Steve Goggins. You're not going to be remembered like these guys. They've been in it for 20, 30, 40 years. So, you know, just take your time. You know, enjoy the process, as I said. Well, I wish you the best of luck today. I hope you awesome, uh, man. Yeah, appreciate it. hope you stay hydrated. I, I hope Doing you, it right now. You, you, you got enough nutrients in you. And, yeah. you know, when that when that record falls today for you, I hope you take a moment and enjoy it. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know. Then we're on, right back to work. <laughs> right back to work tomorrow, yeah, right? Yeah, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Gary. Thanks so much, man.